And welcome to the show. So it's Tuesday, the 7th of Feb, and this is going out live on Mint Wave Radio. So you can just ask Alexa or you can go to karenrobertscoaching.com forward slash Mint Wave hyphen radio to listen in live. And you can see the schedule for the rest of the week. Or on the podcast, you can go to karenrobertscoaching.com forward slash podcast hyphen network to see mine and other podcasts that are in our network. You can download the app for Apple and Android and please subscribe and follow or you can leave a review. So today's episode, we have Benjamin Jones and he is the co-founder of Type Marketer and Youth in Business. And today we're going to be talking about scaling through YouTube ads, something that maybe some are either avoiding or just haven't sort of got into that yet. I'm your host, Karen Roberts. Now, we provide a platform for coaches, consultants, therapists, and healers to get their message heard uh, to the people who need it. So as owners of Mintwave Radio Station and Raising Vibrations Podcast Network on Podbean, we also have a directory. So if you're a coach out there and you want to get started and want to get your message heard, get in touch. The website is there. So, Ben, thank you for... uh, coming on the show, if you'd like to share with the audience a little bit more about who you are and what specifically you do. Cool. Well, look, thank you, Karen, for having me. I appreciate um, everyone's attention who's listening. Uh, Hopefully I can provide some value to you guys today. Uh, Yeah, look, a little bit about me. Look, I actually live in Australia of all places and um, have four kids. I run a couple of different businesses. Uh, One is obviously Titan Market. We help people grow their businesses with YouTube advertising. And uh, I also run another business called Youth in Business. We help kids uh, start successful businesses before they finish high school. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about me and probably five seconds or less. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, for starters, actually, I'd like to start about the kids. Um, so what prompted you to start this business up? Yeah, sure. So Youth in Business started um, when my son was eight, actually. He's now 14. So we've, I don't know how long we've been running for, like seven years, six, seven years or something. And um, yeah, really cool. So what ended up happening was, uh, you know, my wife and I had done well in business and a few other things. And uh, Trent came to us and asked if, you know, he was looking for pocket money or something like that. And we thought, look, I'd, we wouldn't, don't just want to give kids stuff. We want them to go out there and create it and be in control of their own money and be self-sufficient right so uh, he started a little business just selling herbs in our neighborhood and did really well and um, from there we had other people ask us how to do it and then next thing we know we're on stage talking about it and helping kids all over all over the world um, which is really cool so that's that's sort of how it started was sort of with our own kids and I guess really just you know I think entrepreneurialism and schools just not really taught in school today and um, if it is, at best, they teach them to start a not-for-profit, you know, even if they do a little business thing at school, they don't get to keep any of the money. And I think it, it's such a shame that, um, you know, kids are basically just taught to become employees and get caught in a rat race probably working at something they don't like for the rest of their lives um, when what they could be doing is literally learning the skill set of an entrepreneur and taking their passions or ideas or what they like doing and turning that in some sort of um, income or business. So I guess that's yeah. that's our passion is just opening you know, kids' minds to a bright future in business. And, I mean, even if they learn how to start a successful business and, you know, while they're still in school, even if, even when they go out later on into the world and become an employee for somebody else, at least they're going to understand how the business works, right? And, um, mm. you know, they're going to know how to add value and, and you know, and get ahead. So, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I 100% agree. That is the problem. I think with the whole, I mean, you're in Australia, I'm sure the school system's not much different to it is over here. And you're right, they are basically being conditioned to just be worker bees and to not really think outside that box. And I, I do think there's a yeah, massive gap for that. So you seem to be filling that. And the, the kids themselves, I bet they're far more excited to learn from you than to learn, you know, standard business uh a business degree, say, at uni, uh, I'm sure it's going to be far more interesting when you're uh, facing it with an entrepreneurial mindset. Oh, 100%. I mean, here's the problem with universities and things like that. There's no real good place to go and learn business because, I mean, at best you might be able to go and do something with your local government or like a small business course or something like that. Um, But realistically, like, that's taught by people who are just school teachers really and haven't really started a business themselves. You know, if you... If, what would you rather? Would you rather go to university, pay ridiculous amounts of money or college, 
here in America and pay, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars doing an MBA taught to you by people who've never run a business versus going and speaking to someone who's probably created you know, millions of dollars in business and asking them how to do it, you know? So mm. I think that's really where we're at today. And um, I think there's a lot of outdated teaching and teaching people how to start business. Like most people go out and start business and if you take the college or the university degree, they're going to say, oh, look, you know, if you're profitable in the first year, that's great and create a $500 500-page business plan and all this rubbish, right? <laughs> um, whereas what we teach kids to do is literally sell it before you build it. So actually have something sell and be profitable in your first month and grow your business from what you learn lessons of making sales, right? So we get kids who start with um, $20 here in Australia or £20 there in the US, uh, in the UK, sorry. And um, what happens is they're able to then turn that money into like a couple of hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Most of the kids who's, who we work with do at least a thousand dollars in their first month, right? Um, wow. So it's, it's real fun. And so from there, like we've had kids who've gone on from that to, you know, we have like a 10K club, like my my personal kids, my 15-year-old, my 10-year-old, my 8-year-old all made well over $10,000 in December last month, right? So we have another club called our 10K club. That's each, by the way. And right. um, so it's it's just it's really easy to get out there and start business if you've just got some good business principles and you can get out there and make sales, right? So, uh, you know, we've had kids buy houses before they're 18. Um, we've had one of our kids, you know, write a book saying um, how I made more money than my principal. Like it's it's a whole thing. And the, what's what's really fun is, you know, just opening kids' minds of what can be achieved. We've, we've won award, like kids have been in every media outlet and won awards in Australia and in the UK and all sorts of different things. But all of that's because they're young and they get started and, um, you know, the world's just really open for kids to start business right now. It's probably the best thing you could do with kids in today's world. So, Yeah, definitely. And, and I suppose they haven't been beaten down. You know, they're, uh, what, what's beautiful about that is they're coming from, okay, they may be still in school, so they haven't had the experiences of being in the workplace and being sort of having their motivation, <laughs> being uh, brought down, 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 and they haven't got the expenses. I think, you know, so many people when they want to start uh, a business and if they've been in the uh, been an employer or are an employee, it's a scary place because they've got bills to pay, they've got mortgages, they've got this, that. And so their perception of starting a business, they're starting it from, you know, a lot more fear. But I suppose the kids... Their minds are wide open. They're going to be more creative. I mean, what a world we're going to live in if we get a generation of kids doing this because they're really going to be heart-centered and doing what they're truly passionate about. Oh, 100%. And, and what's even more fun with this is because we tell we get kids to literally start with, you know, $20 or £20 in their first month and they turn that, I mean, even if they turn that into $200 in a month or $500 in a month or something like that, that's still fantastic, Right. And um, but what that I think that teaches you a very valuable skill set. If you were ever down to your last twenty dollars or your last twenty pounds, you have a skill set to go out there and turn that into a couple of hundred dollars with whatever it might be, a bunch of different ideas. And if we could get that across to the next generation, there'd literally be no more homeless. There'd be you know, or there'd be no more like social security or or welfare or any of that. We could actually help the next generation or even people today become accountable for their own situations and provide for themselves and be self-sufficient so i mean that's kind of like a side thing too but i think could be very powerful for the next generation well what i've just heard there i think that's that's it i mean that is incredibly empowering and yeah like you said that means that you know somebody on the street that gets given you know some money and then instead of going and spending it on something else, they could turn that in. I mean, that's actually the future of that is um, pretty mind boggling. Did you have that in mind when you first started started the business? Yeah, I have. I have to admit, like that was actually something someone someone come and told me about it. Like it was one of the learnings from one of the parents of the kids. Uh, I'd love to claim that that was like my thought process, but it wasn't. <laughs> so uh, one of the kids. Had, one of the kids had gone out and done it and, and done really well and his mum came to me and said, oh, do you realise that if you could teach, you know, basically what I just said? And I was like, huh. Uh, it was kind of mm. a side thing, but I was like, that is actually, like, quite cool. So. Wow. Yeah, that is, yeah, when you put it when you put it like that, that is actually massive. But so it started out from genuinely wanting to help teach your children 
So rather than just, you know, accept they can go out and be independent and do it for themselves. But then actually what you've created is something a lot larger than that. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Without how it realizing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Um, so, I mean, honestly, it's probably the most rewarding thing I've done in terms of like, you know, programs we've created or things we've helped people or like whatever. It's, it is actually really cool. It's, and um, we get a great kick out of watching the kids do some just absolutely incredible things. But more like that's probably more from a, like a selfish thing for me, like being able to see that. But like honestly, like seeing where some of these kids are now, like they're leaving school and they're like stepping into businesses that they've created while they were kids. And you know, like it, it's really cool to see all of that come to play. So, um, yeah, yeah it's really, really fun. Oh, I think I'm going to get my daughter in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it would be great. They were fully self-sufficient, and and yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, people hear of Gary Vaynerchuk going on about it. Kids, they could just go to a, um, a flea market and upsell onto eBay. There's so many. You're right. There's so many different ways, but they've got to actually take action, and that seems to be the missing link, even with us adults. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. some people want to start a business and this thing about it's interesting this you know I suppose for the families of the kids from my just from my perception from what you've said there they've got the option of uni or going with you well uni as you said I mean I don't know what it costs in Australia it it's thousands here I'm sure it is the same there so what would you prefer because you know just coming out with a piece of paper you know, and half of these kids, even if they've got the, you know, a top degree, you know, top marks, doesn't doesn't mean they're going to get a job. And in fact, sometimes they can be overqualified, so they're still not getting jobs. Whereas doing it with you to have them empowered to be fully independent to go out and start a business, yeah, as a parent, what would you what would you rather do? Um, uh. But the the mentality, what I see. With a lot of people, a lot of, um, and I'm talking adults here, that maybe are still in the employee position, the uh, this mindset of they want to try and do it all by themselves, which <laughs> is a very long process if you don't know what you're doing. Because of the mindset, they don't want to invest, even though they may have invested thousands of dollars in uni. And to me, it doesn't make sense. Do you do you find that with uh, a lot of people that are wanting to start a business but sort of reluctant to invest in themselves? I think so. I think a lot of people um, are scared of risk, right? And, and, and you know, when you've got kids, you know, you, you, you don't want to go and do something with them that fails. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's got to work for kids, right? Like you want to be able to help them and grow and, and that sort of thing too. And you're not really taught how to start a business or understand any of these skills. So most people who go out into business, usually they um, might have a trade background or something like that. They think that they can just go do a thing and not realise that it's not being the electrician or being the plumber or the restaurant owner and making the food that's the business end. There's a whole other skill set that you need to learn on top of that, right? And um, I feel that's why a lot of businesses fail. Like the failure rate of most businesses over a I think it's like a two to five year period is 90% of businesses are going to fail. So even if you just go into that, you know, it's, it's a scary place. And, you know, to, to then take that and go, Oh, look, this is perceived as quite risky, you know, for my kids to do, you know, if they just go and get a good education, they'll be looked after, which, you know, is kind of like 20 year old, like 20 year ago thinking, if that makes sense. Like today's world mm. is completely different. Um, you know, most people back in the day would go get a career and they would stay in that career forever, whereas most people are chopping and changing careers now every five years. So uh, just because with the pace of technology and what's happening. So, um, you know, it's it's interesting, but I think for for kids, like for, for parents overcoming that, like it's coming back to your question, like how do, how do we get over that? I think because we're so conditioned at school not to take risks and not to fail, and as an adult, failure is such a big risk if you've got a family and whatever else and kids to try and impart like risk taking to kids is is really tricky. And um, where it comes in really cool is, uh, and this is, I think, is the, is the key to it. And, you know, whether you do it through us or whoever, I really don't mind. But if you've got like you and another family, that works really well. So having some sort of community around it is what makes a difference. So if you had like 
maybe another entrepreneurial parent and you're like, hey, look, maybe your kids and our kids can do separate businesses, but maybe just touch base once a week or once a month and see how it's going and swap stories and that sort of thing. Because the problem is, especially with kids, it has to there has to be that peer group in place of like, this is actually a cool thing to do, right? So it's really, really mm. important for kids. Um, so that's that's really important, but taking action, and I, that's where people get stuck. It's like, well, what do I do? What's even a good idea? So, I mean, we give away like 101 good ideas that work or whatever, but what you really want to do is just go get started. Like, honestly, like bake something and go door knocking, you know, um, it's, it's, it's about that hard. But, you know, just getting your kids outside that comfort zone. And what we find works well there is it's just if they have like some sort short-term goal that they want to get, like most kids want something or whatever it is. They might want you know, a Nintendo Switch or a new laptop or a new phone or usually it's some gadget in today's world. And um, what we usually say to them is like, well, what's something that, 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 you know, if you could go and get, that would be super exciting. And don't make it any more than a couple hundred dollars, right? And then say, okay, and then like go all in with your kids, support them for that month to just hit that goal. And then what you'll find is because they've got rewarded and they've got heaps of people are going to come around and go, hey, man, that was awesome, well done. They're going to have like that whole, um, you know, their whole environment is going to be telling them that's a good thing. They're going to feel good about it. And then you pretty much just created a young entrepreneur, right? So, and it could, like, it doesn't even have to be the thing they want. Like, and just to sort of back that up, I was having a chat with my son the other day who's um, 11 now. He was saying, oh, dad, like just because Christmas is just gone. He's like, what was the coolest thing you got for Christmas when you were 11? I was like, man, I can't remember. I have no <laughs> idea. And he's like, oh, well, how can you not remember? And I said, well, can you remember what you got for Christmas when you were eight? He's like, no. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I said, well, can you remember everything that you've bought from having going out and doing some form of business and saving up for it and then going and buying it? And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember buying, you know, these cool Legos and I remember buying my Nintendo Switch and I remember buying this and this and this, right? And I'm like, I was like, they're the things ah. that you're going to remember because you've had to actually put the effort in and been rewarded for it and, you know, um, you know, so that, that's quite that's quite cool. I think today kids get yeah. a lot of things given to them and they don't earn them in a way that's mm. like positive, positive for them going forward. And I feel that breeds a sense of entitlement almost a little bit and, you know, where you could be empowering people and empowering kids themselves to be self-sufficient to get the things they want. So, yeah. So yeah. I guess, I mean, I've covered a lot of concepts there, but it it is super powerful, like empowering kids instead of get, making them entitled. So Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's and that's interesting that, yes, you would remember those things as opposed to, yeah, we, we'd all get complacent. Yeah, I'm sure I would. If I was just given stuff, and I didn't have to do anything. I'm sure I would, you know, we we would get lazy naturally, I suppose, when 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 you have to. And I think that that can be sometimes, even when people are starting a business, is that if they are too comfortable, and they do have a very good job that pays a lot, even if they wanted the time freedom or whatever the reason of wanting to create their business, it's not so high on the priority because they're safe. Sometimes people come out when their back's against the wall, not all, but sometimes you, you just need a little bit more of a push to get you going. Do you think? Uh, yeah, of course. And look, um, I guess the other thing is as entrepreneurs or business owners, like you, you get to a point where you have to realize like no one's coming to save you. Right. So I think a lot of adults miss this point, you know, like, no one is coming to save you. You need to stand up and, and save yourself, right? And, um, and like that's, you know, might be considered a harsh statement, but in kids today, if you can instill that, that they don't need anyone to come save them, that's much better than having to figure out that no one's coming, right? So. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And there you go. That's perception because I see that as being empowered. Uh, don't see that as a negative at all. No one's coming to save you. That means all I have the power because otherwise they will always have the power and then you have no control. I think that's very a very empowering message. So, okay, so that's the kids. <laughs> I know we were going to talk about YouTube ads, but I, I just love what you're doing there with the kids. So moving on to for businesses that are ready to scale um, using YouTube ads. When you say ready to scale, is this for... 
Um, so this isn't for new business owners or it can be, or is it better for people who are getting ready to go to the next level? Yeah, look, um, all levels, it's going to work, right? Like it, what it, what it matters is you've got something to sell. So if I've got a brand new idea and I've got nothing to sell, well, obviously running paid marketing to that is probably not the answer. <laughs> right? so, so, you know, if you're at that level, you know, this is probably not the conversation. But if, you, if you're out there and you've got, a, so you've got something to sell, that's going to work really well. Now, on top of that, it's just what level you want to get in on. If you've been running Facebook ads and you've already got like a sales process that works and you've already been running like ads that have worked in the past that may not be working now, like that's going to be easier then say someone who's got a brand new sales process and a brand new website and a brand new business idea hasn't worked out who they need to talk to and what their message is and all of that. So it will work. It just depends. Like, you know, the world's not created equal on that front. Um, mm. So, yeah, to answer your question. So if you're looking to scale, like maybe get to the next level is probably a nicer way or a better way of putting it. Um, if you're thinking, you know, how do I get to the next level? And probably a good parable there is if you have a look at, any major successful business that's been around for a decade or more, they've all figured out this one secret, which is basically how do I acquire a customer through paid marketing and be profitable on it? You know, from McDonald's mm. all the way through to whatever department store that you're standing in, right, or go and have a look at or, you know, whatever equipment you're using to record this thing, they've all figured that out, right? So, mm -hmm. and as a business owner, if you really want to scale, like word of mouth is great. You know, that's good and, you know, having a good product and all of that. But a lot of business owners get trapped in being the best kept secret. You know, like they've got a really good product. They've got a really good service, but they just can't can't get enough exposure for their, what it is that they're wanting to do. And that's where scale comes in. And that's where it's like, well, what paid advertising platform can we look at? And that's where, you know, you'll, you'll have a look at a couple. And then obviously YouTube ads is the one that we help people with. So... Okay. And how does it differ to, because, you know, uh, not that I run Facebook ads, I have run in the past. And what I found was, um, you know, you're, you're probably going to lose money on a low cost product. But, you know, if you've got a higher ticket on the back end, then you're going to make the money on the back end. With Is it going to be the same as that with YouTube? Look, you have to have a sales process that works. You know, like if you're, if you're going to spend $5 a click on something and you're selling a $3 thing, it's not, it's, no, it's you know, no amount of, no amount do of, do the like, math, do the yeah, math. A hundred percent. No amount of awesome marketing is going to make that work. And uh, what we do is we say, look, if you're going to run paid marketing, you need to have what's called a three minimum, three times return on ad spend. So for every $1 you spend, you need to be making at least $3 in sales back. And that that's like a minimum across, I don't care what business you're in, whether it's e-commerce or coaching or service-based business or whatever, Right. Um, and the way that we work that out usually with people is because a lot of people actually haven't sat down and done the math, right? So uh, this kind of a bit of a, a boring topic, but probably like one of the most <laughs> important things you need to get right. Like we actually give away uh, marketing calculators for people to work this out. So for example, if let's take an e-com business, for example, there's three things you really need to know. You need to know like how much is the traffic going to cost? So like let's say a dollar a click right? Mm -hmm. um, how much is my lifetime value of a client? So if someone buys something from me, what are they worth? So for example, let's say that I'm selling, I don't know, some sort of cosmetic thing, moisturizer or something like that. And I know that I sell one thing for $10 and I know that people are going to come back three times and I make, you know, $3, uh, sorry, $30 or 30 pounds or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So now we know how much the traffic costs, it costs a dollar. Now we know that a client's worth $30. So that's our lifetime value. The next thing we need to know is like, well, what is our conversion rate? Like if, if I send someone to my website, how many people who come to my website buy? Okay. Now you would be surprised. Most business owners have not figured that out. Okay. Mm. They've not figured out how much it costs a click. They haven't figured out what their lifetime value is. And they haven't figured out like if we had a hundred people enter my sales process or my website, how many of those people who land there or my landing page funnel, insert what you will, are going to convert, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were to do the math and we could say, look, you had dollar clicks, they're worth $30 and our conversion rate is 3%, you know, one out of three people, well, that's going to cost me, I don't know, what is that? Um, like $10 or something? No. My math isn't quite. Yeah, out right of 30. So, yeah, so 30%. Yeah, $30. Yeah, so it's going to be like $30. I'm going to break even. No. Right. 
Well, yeah. Hang well, 1%. on, thirty percent. Thirty percent of thirty is nine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, no. So one, so one dollar clicks. Oh, one dollar. Uh, yeah, with the one dollar clicks. Yes, sorry. Yeah, so the one dollar clicks okay. would be thirty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Yeah, so, Matt, yeah. give me a calculator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one one dollar clicks at three percent. You know, you're looking at thirty dollars to get a conversion. Your product's worth thirty dollars. You're literally breaking even, right? So that's yes. probably that's not going to work for you, right? So what you need to do there is, well, maybe we could add a, a subscription offer to it and make that product worth like $60. Then all of a sudden you have profitable marketing and you can scale and, you know, do the whole thing. But if you don't do the math first, um, the whole mm. thing will will fall on its head. So that I would challenge anyone who didn't know how to do that, like just spend the five minutes working out. If you The things you need to work out is what is my conversion rate? You can work that out pretty easily. And um, how much does my cost per click? And if you don't know what a cost per click is for your industry, literally just go to like Google search um, or like something like Neil Patel's, what's he call it, um, like search tool that you can use. You just Uber suggest you can just go in there and type in like what would people be searching and that's going to give you a rough cost per click. And that's going to be more expensive because that's Google search than say Facebook or YouTube ads. So you've got like a worst case number to start with if you're just getting started. So. Yeah, hopefully that makes Ooh. sense. I know there was a lot of math there and it was a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is like... it. But, you know, and, and I do find that I suppose that the ones that are um, slightly more the creative don't are naturally not going to like the math. But mm. like you say, it is the most important. That's the first thing we do on our pro. Know your numbers. Know your numbers. Yes, it's boring, but you've got to do it. <laughs> you've got to do it before moving on. Otherwise, you you just you yeah you'll be losing money left right and center because you don't know whether you're on track or not and yeah it's a it's a bit of a nightmare so with um now obviously i think you know more people know about facebook they possibly have tried and failed doing facebook ads so for you what what's the real difference in the two in the two things what why is youtube ads a better option Cool. So I'm just trying to redo that math that we just did before, and I'm, I might have, actually, <laughs> might have actually got that wrong. So, but yeah. Anyway, so look, coming back to um, coming back to YouTube ads, uh, why is it better than say the other options? I'm thinking, you know, look, what are your options out there? There's search ads, which is super expensive. Uh, there's say email marketing, which you need a big list for. There's social media, which is going to you know create content that's a really slow burn. Um, and then you've got Facebook ads, which you know, let's be real, are very saturated and probably about as reliable as a politician's promise in today's world, right? <laughs> so True. You know, the, the way to look at it really is, um, you know, in terms of YouTube ads, YouTube ads are probably where Facebook was a decade ago, where search ads were, you know, back in the 90s and um, 2000s and email was back in the 90s. And the reason for that is, you know, only 8% of businesses in the US and in Australia, it's under 10 are using YouTube advertising, Right? So it's a big, massive blue ocean where somewhere between 80 and 90% of all businesses that are doing paid marketing are doing Facebook ads. So you can see like one's really saturated and one's not. And the, the other mm. thing that's cool about that is, um, you know, basically you get to be rewarded for getting in. And, and right now, like Google ads, which is YouTube ads, it's the same thing, is literally giving away in Australia, it's $600 to get started. Uh, in America, it's 500. I'm not sure what it is in um, the UK, but it'll probably be like 250 pounds, I would say, or somewhere around there right? just to get started with them. Um, which if you have a look at like these ad platforms on what you would call an adoption curve, they all start off at the beginning, right? And they want to get like heaps of users in there and then everyone gets in, they get saturated and they get really expensive. And then the next one yeah. comes out. So, you know, in another five or 10 years, it might not be YouTube ads. It might be something else, right? Yeah. So for right now, like YouTube ads is literally at the beginning of that adoption curve. I mean, when was the last time Facebook gave you hundreds of dollars to come spend money on their platform? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. The day after never, right? So, and, and, that, and that's where YouTube ads are today. And it, also it's a big opportunity because a lot of people have to create ads and they think it's hard, like video ads, which is really not. And um yeah, it's just it's positioned in the, in the marketplace at a really good spot. So, mm, yeah, it's something that I mean, I I have to say, my YouTube channel. I know it's not optimized right. We just sort of had the 
thought process process of we'll just get it out there and when we have time we'll get to <laughs> get to doing it which i know is the wrong <laughs> wrong way to do it <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe it's a maybe it's an idea of actually looking at and, and correcting those things. But there's just so many different platforms. You're like, I can't do everything at once. But with with um, YouTube, well, I suppose you don't even have to have a YouTube. You don't have to be to, to run an ad. You don't have had to have had a, your own channel set up, do you? No, a hundred percent. So, um, you, like. This is the problem with being really good at paid ads, right? Is that you don't really do your socials as well as you should. Um, because if, <laughs> if you get oh, 100%. Um, and this is actually why I do a lot of podcasts is because my social media manager just like loses it at me because I don't create a lot of content, right? Um, <laughs> and the problem with that is if, if you are good at paid marketing and you can get the leads in that you want, you don't have a need for... You don't you have, need. Like, it's important for social proof and stuff like that, but realistically you don't need to understand 100 platforms right um no and this was a crashing epiphany i had probably well over a decade ago when facebook was big we were right into like running facebook ads and all of that and um and it was that look if and it's that same thing if you can acquire a customer consistently you know you can scale your business to whatever side you want size you want the problem is most businesses haven't figured out how do i get enough customers at the right price so mm. And if you can learn how to pay for that, like that's that's a skill set to create any business mm. and grow it, right? As long as you understand the math and you understand how to acquire customers. So, yeah, I mean, I suppose at the end of the day, there's only there's two ways of of, of building your business. You know, spending your time or spending your money. And I suppose uh, you know, so many people are using as we do, you know, and as we teach is is the. Uh, laborious way of attraction marketing methods because yeah there's a lot of work to be done because like you said it's it's like a long it's like really a long-term strategy because it takes a while to build the know like and trust blah 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 and you do have to be constantly um posting whereas when you're then ready to scale to then switch to the save your time and spend the money <laughs> and always come out of a profit but um you know, really, maybe we should <laughs> just <laughs> just jump to that option. <laughs> but that, but yeah. that's where I think everybody is so. You know, there, there's, there's almost like a process they go through their business. They could be when they're starting out, they might be a bit nervous, not fully even believing in themselves. So they, you know, they want to sort of grow with it slowly, and then when they're ready, they then they can invest. But I think a lot of it comes from fear. A hundred percent. And and like a lot of people starting out with their with their ad budgets, if they spend, you know, a hundred or two hundred dollars on testing something and it doesn't work, they're like, Oh, it doesn't work, walk away. Ah. Uh, and um what a lot in a lot of times what they don't realise is, you know, uh it is a bit of a longer you gotta be in it for a bit longer than that, right? So like whatever you're running, like let's say I'm selling that thirty dollar thing that we talked about before, you know, realistically, if I spent uh, you know, the first month just playing around with it and getting it wrong and whatever else. And let's say I invested like $500 or something like that. But what I did in the last week is I figured out how to do get, you know, a couple of leads in at the right price. You know, I'd be like, I haven't, I haven't lost, you know, the $450 on marketing that didn't work. You know, I've, I've actually learned a skill set there, invested in the business and ready to grow it and so on. And that's where a lot of businesses will fall over is they'll, They'll try paid marketing for a little bit and it's like, oh, it's risky. It doesn't really work and um, without really having – and it, they don't sit down and do the math beforehand. That's their other problem. So maybe they're marketing the wrong thing and then they they have all those, like you're saying, all those doubts and they, you know, they haven't really got a clear strategy and plan to put that together. They usually just throw money at something. It doesn't work and then they'll move on to the next thing, right? So um, Yeah, they've, well, they've not given it long enough. I mean, everything – there's never going to be, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, there's never going to be one way. So a lot of it's going to be because there's so many different types of business, you know, the per, you know, it's going to be down to the person as well. There's, there's so many moving parts that everything is going to take a little bit of trial and error. I mean, do you, do you know anybody that had just got it right the first time, the first ever time that they did it? 
Um, well, no, like we, we like we do work with some like startups and things like that as well. And usually, what happens is you just have to say to them, "Look, um, here's what your math will look like if you bunker down with this for a month or two. But you need to understand that when you're first getting started, you've got a brand new landing page, you've got brand new ads, you've got brand new campaigns." You need to test out like what audiences work and what ads work. If you spend a month worth of test budget, so I mean, let's say that you want to be get to a point where you're spending like a thousand pound or a thousand dollars a month, right? Um, you wouldn't start there. You know, you might start with let's spend you know a hundred or two hundred dollars a month, see if we can get something to work, right? And then when you've got something working, then double down on it and and scale up and grow from there, right? And um, that's that's how you would do it, and uh, if you could, if you could say to yourself, "Look, if I can do a test budget for like a month or two, like even if it was three months, like what can I afford to lo- lose on this learning exercise getting started?" That's going to put you in a good stead. Now, you know, if you said to me, "Look, we want to hit a million dollars by this point. We've got a hundred thousand dollar <laughs> budget." Uh, you've really got two ways of doing it, and one is you can do it, um, you know, slowly, like cheap and slow, like small test budgets, and test what's working and do it slowly. Or you can just come in with a big budget and be willing to lose, you know, a little bit on the front end, but know that you've got heaps of budget to make up for it once you go on the other. And then you can do it really quick, you know. So Right. Yeah. So, yeah. again, doing the math and knowing that you can afford to lose that on the front end again because once you do get it right, the profit margin is X, Y, Z. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah, 100%. And if you've sat down and done the math first in your industry, you know that your landing page converts to this, you've thrown some warm traffic out of water, you've got a rough idea of what's going on with your sales process. That's when you can really come in and like, you know, it doesn't matter what ad platform, like obviously we're talking YouTube ads here and that's really probably the best place to get started because the targeting is just so good. But, you know, any any ad platform, if you've got a good sales process and you can acquire the traffic at the right price, your marketing is going to work, right? Mm-hmm. So oh. that's what a lot of people miss. And and how long are these ad, What how, how long is a standard ad for? What's the sort sure. of time frame? A couple of yeah, minutes, I mean, less than 30 seconds? For YouTube ads, you, you want to have them under three minutes. Like that's a, that you have to do that, right? Uh, but realistically, probably somewhere between a minute and three and probably two and a half minutes is what you're looking for. And the reason for that is the ads on YouTube are very different to everywhere else. And that's because it's the way people come to the platform. If you come to YouTube ads, man, you're coming there. To, if you're coming to the YouTube platform, you're coming there to learn something like typing in how to, or you're there to be entertained watching cool videos and stuff that you like, right? So it's not the same as someone scrolling through a feed, looking at what people are eating for breakfast and cats and whatever, and then you interrupt them <laughs> with an ad. Like it's, it's not that platform, right? So you need to create ads that are like educative, and and entertaining, right? So that's that's what you got to do. Now, there's a four-part process to that. You need to have the ads I'm talking about too are the pre-roll ads. You know the ones where you're like watching your content and you got like five seconds to skip them. Mm-hmm. They're the type of ads you want to run on YouTube. There's lots of different types. That's the best one, right? And what is and that then, called? Sorry again. So that's called a um, pre-roll. Um, pre-roll ad. Sorry, I'm having pre-roll. a long day. So yeah, so pre. <laughs> Pre-roll ads are what you're looking for and basically you're wanting to get people to hang around past the skip button. Now, if they click the skip button, it's actually free for you. It doesn't cost you anything. So you actually want people to skip your ads, right? Which is a good thing because you're getting you're, you're getting yeah, noticed. Yeah. So the next time, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that's good. And what will happen is YouTube will just show your ads to people who can who like it, you know, because then the people who are skipping, they're like, hey, they don't like this ad, show them a different one and so on. So it's really clever the way YouTube's done it. Now, the, the next thing from there is like, because that, if we look at the structure of a YouTube ad, that skip button and is where you put what's called the hook. Now, the hook's where you want to grab their attention, right? That has to be, surprise, surprise, only five seconds long because the whole point of that thing is to get them to hang around after the skip, okay? Mm. So usually you'd say something like, um, you know, you're sick of burning money on Facebook ads, you want to try YouTube ads. Or you might say something like, um, you know, whatever it is that you do, help them in some way, get them to answer like a rhetorical question where the answer is yes, that's usually a really good hook, right? Now, mm-hmm. the the next bit after that is that's the next part of that is the second part of the YouTube ad and that's called an elevator pitch, okay? Now, the elevator pitch, if you don't know what that is, it's like a sales process or a sales um 
communication where you would go out to someone, uh, say you worked in a high rise building, you get to the top floor with the CEO and you pitch him all the way down on why you deserve a promotion, right? Now that, that pitch for you is someone's watching your ad, you want to have like a really good pitch of why they should listen to you and how you're going to help them, okay? So that's what you put there. And the cool thing with that is you want to make that part less than 25 seconds long. So now you've got a, got a hook, which is five seconds long to get a skip. And the other reason the next one needs to be 25 seconds long is because YouTube ads are free for the first 30 seconds. Okay. So imagine mm. if you know, Facebook, the best thing you can do is like three seconds is free or 15 seconds with through play. On YouTube, you get twice the length with the ad. Wow. Right? So that's massive. You can say a lot in 30 seconds. You can pretty much have a mini ad in three mm. in 30 seconds, right? So what we do there is we have our hook, we have our elevator pitch, you know, pitching, what you know, and it's usually something like, hey, this is how we can help you. This is what we do. You know, um, if you're interested, click the button. And I always ask them to click the button or take an action in at the end of that elevator pitch. Within, right? right, within yeah. that 30 seconds. <laughs> Right. And then what I'll say is, look, if that sounds interesting, here's why, here's how we can help you. And that's where you tell your story. Now, your story actually has to deliver value. Like you have to actually help people, okay, and give them value in that ad. Uh, it's not just a salesy ad about you. You want to talk about you as least as possible and your product as least as possible as well. Because if you have a look at the, the sales process of, of advertising here on YouTube, um, basically the ad is people go through a sales process that goes, problem, um, solution. So you're problem aware, then you're solution aware, then you're product aware, then you're most aware, right? So that's the sales process. So the ad really is talking about the problem. Okay, you're talking about the problem. Uh, the story might start to talk about the solution, but the rest of the solution lives on the landing page, right? So you're not talking about your, like your particular product that costs this much, buy this now. That's not the place for that in the ad, okay? The place for that is on the landing page. So you just want to get a, create enough curiosity and give them enough value to get to the landing page, right? So that's what goes in your story. And then lastly, the fourth part is a close. The fourth part is, hey, if you're really interested in that, make sure you click on the link, blah, 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 blah. And you have to sell the click, okay? So in the close, mm -hmm. don't do click here to find out more. It's like the worst thing you could say. Yeah. What you want to say is you want to say, so if you're interested in this and getting this benefit, click the link to find out more because you've now sold the click of why they should click, right? So that's if you follow that process there, that's going to give you a pretty good YouTube ad structure on how to follow and um, and, and get mm. that all on the Love so. that. So with your, with your whole business then, um, how do you help people through this process then? Yeah, so look, we offer a whole bunch of free training because we really know like people who – just getting started or play with it a little bit, like we can really take them to the next level quicker, right? So uh, if they know the sales process and so on. So we give away a whole bunch of free stuff. Um, so we run free trainings, live trainings once a week, and we literally give away like all the calculators to do your math like we just talked about. We give away like literally how to write your scripts, how to get started, all of that, right? Um, so if you're interested in that, like you can come check us out at Titan Marketer. We do like a live training. We literally give all that stuff away, Right. Um, from there, um, we'll either have, you can either book a call with us and have a chat. Um, and we, we do customized packages usually depending on like what a business is and what they need. Um, and then the, and the other thing we do is we have events. So we have an event coming up in Brisbane, uh, coming up soon. And for two days, you guys sit with us and we have to build out everything you need with your YouTube ads. Okay. Um, uh, and that's sort of, that's sort of how we, how we do it. Um, but yeah, we usually work with, customers to build out their ads or we help them hire people into their business and we teach them our system and then they use that in their, their ads. So we, we really, right. it depends on what people, it depends on what people need. Like some, some companies have a whole marketing team. They want us to train. Some people just want us to handle it. Some people just need a bit of help getting started. So, you know, everyone's at different. So something for it, something for everyone. So yeah. you do, you do live events as well. And are they just in Australia or are they global? At the moment, they're just in Australia, um, just with the whole uh, way the world is. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you never know. You might not get back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, and particularly like in like where I live in Western Australia, um, like we were like we couldn't even leave our state for nearly two years. So, like we couldn't even get to the other part of Western Australia. It was totally 
the other parts of Australia. So it was pretty crazy. Um, I w- like I have done events in the UK before, you know, so and the US. So you know, international events aren't something new to me. Um, at this point, we're doing them like in Australia, but we do do the live virtual training once a week. So that's where we, you know, help our American clients and UK clients and stuff like that. So cool. Yeah. And so to the listeners. Uh, if this is of interest to you and you'd like to get started or like to find out any more information, how will they find you? Yeah, so probably the best place is just go to Titan Marketer, like uh, Marketer, like ER, so not Titan Marketing, TitanMarketer.com. And uh, you can check us out there, all the YouTube stuff and uh, the giveaways and all that stuff will be on there. If you wanted to connect with me personally and have a chat, um, like LinkedIn is probably the best place for that. Just type in Ben Jones and Youth in Business or Titan Marketer and I'll pop up. Um, ben Jones is one of those names that there's just so many Ben Jones. I best. bet there's a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, so usually Ben Jones and Youth in Business or Ben Jones and Titan Marketer, you'll find me um, on any of the social media platforms or wherever. Um, you know, you could probably come and watch this podcast interview of us talking exactly how to do it. So that'll be on my socials as well. So um, Perfect. Come check it out. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's some places that you could come, come grab us. If you're interested in the Youth in Business stuff, we have 101 – kids ideas we give away as well so we're we're really big on just helping people getting out there and get started taking some action right so i love that i I love what you're doing with the kids as well i mean and and it's it's i think i'm gonna have to love it because we do so much video i've never i don't know why we've not sort of focused on the youtube more so i think i'm gonna have to have a look at for those that are a little bit more camera shy can they still run ads like using, I don't know, sort of illustration, you know, uh, sort of cartoon type stuff. Do they work or has it really got to be face to face, to face the person? No, look, it actually, the, the video quality of the ad, and that's where people get really mistaken with YouTube. They think they have to create this like high quality TV structured ad. And it's just not the way it works. I mean, on YouTube, you want to become across like authentic and real, like a real human, because people want to do business with other people. Okay. And the content on YouTube is literally just most of the time people sitting there with their mics in front of their computers talking to people, <laughs> right? So mm-hmm. basically, um, you know, all pretty much all our clients shoot their ads off their phone and a gimbal. Like, that's it. You know, like in, all the ads right. get shot that way. Um, for those who don't want to be in front of the camera, like you said, there's a couple of really cool options for that. Um, you can go to Fiverr and literally get someone to be to record the script that you give them. It's more important what you say than how it's said, right? If you're a service-based business that's people to people, like B2B or B2C that's people to people, you want a person in the ad nine times out of 10, right? If you're a software company or an e-commerce brand or something like that, yeah, you can do explain the videos and all that stuff all day long, right? You know, animations and whatever. Um, But if you do have to go face to camera, you don't have to be the person. So for example, we did some marketing to the US. Um, My business partner, Marcus, he's originally from the US. He has a bit of a US accent. It's like cross between US and Australia. It sounds really weird. But the the cool thing is um, like we weren't getting the cut through that we wanted with our ads over there. And we're like, huh, I wonder if if it's got to do with the accent, right? So then we we hired some of these, uh, these quite attractive girls on Fiverr to do our ad for us. And it worked amazing. (laughs) right so, <laughs> oh there you go there's a good tip <laughs> so there's a good tip so if you don't want to be in it because you're thinking hey maybe i've got a face for radio there's literally like um <laughs> there's literally a whole bunch of attractive people on fiverr that will act you know they're full-on actors that will do your ads for you and away you go yeah so, um you don't ah, so there to... is an option there's an option for those that um yeah. are, sh- are still shying away from from camera i mean i yeah i'd I can't believe that I'm doing what I'm doing now. I would not. I still have an issue with have people taking photos. I can't do a selfie to save my life. <laughs> There's just this mental block. And years ago, the idea, if I've ever thought I was a camera on me, I would just absolutely fall apart. I don't know whether it's an age thing and now I just don't care. <laughs> I'll just be me and, and that is it. And I, what you just said there about, being authentic and I think that maybe that's it even with me looking at um, YouTube ads a lot of the ones I've seen seem to be very very professional and I think 
oh, normally it's just me, might, might have a green screen. <laughs> That's as far as it goes. Um, nothing, nothing too flashy. It's just me talking, really. So I think I've, I've possibly had a bit of a shut off to that because I think, oh, no, my videos wouldn't be good enough for that for YouTube. Whereas people see me on lives or see me on the podcast just chatting and just being me, um, it's different. So what you are saying is don't worry about that. No, uh, you'll actually you'll actually do yourself more harm having the polished look, right? Uh, so, for example, like some of my best ads are when I have a brainwave for at 2 o'clock in the morning and I'll just shoot next to a whiteboard, right? So um, it, you don't have to – it doesn't have to be amazing. It's, it's more important that you help people in the ad and you come across as authentic. Right. That, like that's if I can stress anything there um, and, and be you, you know, like at the end of the day, you want to attract customers who like you for you and you're a good connection with them. And, you know, that's that's what you're looking for. So, yeah, just be authentic, get it out there and um, yeah, don't make it too fancy, but make sure that you do help people in your ads. Yeah. And it's and it, I suppose the scripting. So do you help people with the scripting or again, go to fire? You know, I suppose there's lots of different ways of um, doing it as well. Yeah, so we um, what literally, would you suggest um, for that? Yeah, we literally give away um, like scripting templates. <laughs> so um, like on our training that we do every week, like you, the things you get are like um, scripting templates, you get um, like audience check, like basically how to find your audiences, you get like how to do the calculators, all of that stuff. Because we know if people have figured that out, we can really help them go to the next level, right? So um, scripting your ads. Like here's some real easy ways to do that. Um, basically, you need those four parts. You need it to be the length that I told you and some of the things that go in there, like earlier in the podcast. Uh, we actually give away like a, a scripting checklist to go through and make sure like, have I got everything in the elevator pitch? Yes, I have. There's five elements. Have I got everything in the story? Yes, I have. And if you can follow that checklist, you're going to do really, really well. Yeah, um, another pro tip, if you're thinking, look, even if I had that checklist and all your stuff, I'd still struggle to write it. If you haven't checked it out yet, go check out ChatGPT. It's freaking oh. amazing. What you can do yeah. is you can actually grab our script writing checklist and stuck, chuck it in ChatGPT Chat and be like, hey, write me an ad as per this, and it will spit you one out in the exact oh, It is right. crazy. All so, this AI. I mean, it's, it's, really it's, cool. it's, 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 gonna, it's, it's changing things, isn't it? So, yes, that is a brilliant tip. Um, yeah, it's really cool. But what, the, the limitation, though, is like the information you give it, right? So if you give it garbage information, it'll give you a garbage ad. So if you can say, hey, look, here's my landing page, here's the format that I want, spit it out like that, that's when you're going to get a good ad script, right? So Wow. I mean, yeah, it's just a tool. I think, again, there's there's there seems to be lots of opinions, <laughs> yeah. lots of opinions. that they're, they're, Again, they're split, aren't they? <laughs> on whether a, the AI is a good thing or a bad thing. At the end of the day, it's just another tool. Like we, n there's never been a time with all the tech that is around and all the tools and the software. And, oh man, it, it's the best time to start a business online because we you never had all this before. So it no. is just a tool. And if you use it well, it's going to help and more importantly, save you time. So, yeah, 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 I completely I'm, forgot I'm, about that. That's a great tip. Great tip. That is cool. <laughs> uh, well, I've loved this conversation. I've learned loads. Um, maybe I should finally come and join you and finally sort my YouTube channel out because it's sort of <laughs> there in the background. It's, do you know what it is, uh, Ben? It's almost like I see it as it's just I'm using it as almost verification validation that i've been 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 doing stuff for a while um as a as a sort of backup it's like a third party verification thing rather than using it as a tool. i've never used it as a tool i've never co you know consciously gone into actually grow the channel yet Very so maybe cool. i should uh maybe i should uh start listening to your on. advice then ben and have a yeah, look, look the, the, cha <laughs> the channel is the channels is cool you don't i guess like a big takeaway is you don't even need the channel like if you've got a good way of using paid ads on whatever platform that might be so yeah uh, the yes thing. two separate things i suppose two yeah separate two things. separate things same platform different way of using it right so you don't need to have a cool youtube channel to run really good youtube ads so ah awesome well, thank you so much for your time. It must be really late over there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
Brilliant talk. If you want to help your kids or you want to scale your business in business, then get in touch with Ben. So that's Titan. I know some people might not hear the accent. I thought you said tight. <laughs> so Titan, T-I-T-A-N, just to be sure. So um, and the rest of you who are listening in, if you are a coach yourself and you want to, again, another platform uh, into podcasting, you want to start your own podcast or you want to have a show on our radio station, then get in touch you can have a chat with me, karenrobertscoaching.com forward slash discovery. And uh, I will be back on Thursday with a coffee with Karen. So bye for now. Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.